We have always been an optimistic and courageous nation. Despite the enormity of these challenges, we believe that solutions are within our collective grasp. You, Mr. President, have already identified three tools that are at our disposal. First, solidarity. We need to reaffirm the wisdom of the founders of our United Nations. This means transcending our differences and committing to ending war, upholding justice, respecting human rights, and maintaining international peace and security. Nuclear weapons continue to pose an existential threat despite our efforts to build norms that resoundingly prohibit them. We must reject the notion of det deterrence and remain committed to decreasing the global stockpile of these weapons. At the same time, we must also address the scourge of the proliferation of all weapons, be they small arms, light weapons, or improvised explosive devices. Our work must also focus on ensuring that the international system remains fair, not only for all states, but more importantly, for all peoples. This system must work for the most vulnerable, especially the marginalized, migrants, refugees. The world has witnessed the enduring contribution of migrants in the fight against this pandemic. We still dream of an end to the disturbing incidents of racism, of Asian hate, of all prejudice. The Philippines United Nations Joint Program on Human Rights is an example of a constructive approach that puts our people, not our politics, at the center of this work. It provides a model for revitalizing the structures that facilitates solidarity between the United Nations and the sovereign duty bearer. Our continued solidarity will also benefit from a reformed and more inclusive Security Council and an empowered General Assembly that can hold the Council to account. At the same time, the United Nations must forge ahead with its flagship tradition of global peacekeeping. 